So hi, I'm Dr. Greg Steinberg, and welcome to Master the Mental Game webinar. It's sponsored by the International Golf Psychology Association, which we'll talk about a little later uh, because they have an online uh, course that I want to mention to you. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit about myself. Some of you uh, know me um, because maybe I, I'm, you know, I've been on the Golf Channel a few times, written for Golf Digest. But I just want to uh, talk a little bit about myself and uh, my background so you kind of get to know me before we kind of start in with the mental game. Uh, but the first thing I want to tell you is I grew up playing tennis. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's a hair don't. That's the 70s, right? The wood racket and uh, uh, the shorts. They're, they're not going to come back, uh, hopefully. But yes, that's what we look like. Um, so I, I was a really competitive tennis player growing up. And um, what I realized was it wasn't about talent. It was about the mental game and the emotional game that allowed uh, the best players to win. So from that, I went on a, uh, a quest, you might say. I studied at UC Santa Barbara uh, psychology, went to Florida State, studied performance psychology, went to the University of Florida, got my PhD, studied performance psychology there. Um, everybody wants to know who I root for uh, between Florida State and University of Florida. It all, it all depends on uh, who's good that year, right? Uh, and then I've been teaching at Austin P for the last 22 years in sports psychology. So I have a really strong background on the um, research and the science, which I want to share with you. I, um, I also have worked with a lot of tour players in terms of the mental game like Brandt, Chris Couch, Brian Gay, Bob Wolcott, a lot, a lot of players on the Corn Ferry Tour, a lot of college players, a lot of college teams. I worked with some NCAA championship teams, which has been really cool. I work with junior golfers, uh, but I also play competitive golf too. I've been playing competitive golf for about 30 years. So I get it from like a 360 approach. And um, that's really what I wanted to share with you tonight is not only the science, not only um, some examples that I'm going to give you with the, the tour players I worked with, but also, you know, what I feel too when I, when I compete, because I'm just like you, you know, I get nervous. Uh, sometimes I play well, sometimes I don't. Uh, I use all the same techniques on myself uh, that I want to share with you. Um, and so when, uh, when people find out I'm a sports psychologist, I always get the same two questions. The first question is, what percentage of golf is, is mental? Um, is it 50%? Is it 70%? Well, I like to say that golf is 100% mental, 100% physical. You can't tease one from the other because when you're playing bad, you're thinking bad and you keep on playing bad and they're totally interconnected. On the flip side, when you're thinking well and you're playing well, you get this upward spiral. So they're totally interconnected. The biggest problem is that most people don't know how to work on the mental game. They know how to work on the physical game, and most of the time when they play poorly, they go to the range and they think it's their swing, whatever it might be, but a lot of times it could have been their mental game. And, and the biggest problem is they appreciate the mental game is important, and I know you appreciate the mental game is important, that's why you're on this webinar, but most people don't know how to work on the mental game. And so one of the goals, if not the main goal tonight, is to show you some of the techniques to work on your mental game and to help others work on their mental game if you're a coach. The second question I always get is, why do some players that have immense talent never make it? Well, I like to say it like this. You know, there's so many great players in college that have great talent. Uh, you have talent, I have talent, but sometimes we have thoughts and emotions which push our talents down, where the most successful players, they have thoughts and emotions which make them raise their game under pressure. And I like to do this in my class, and this is a really good example. Um, I basically say the best players have the right juice the right mental and emotional juice. 
And so it's a great way to explain this with an orange. So the first question I want to ask you is, when I squeeze this orange, what comes out? Orange juice, right? Orange juice always comes out. Not pineapple juice, orange juice. Second question, why? Why does orange juice come out? Because that is what is inside. Third question, what have you put inside? If you put in fear and negativity and doubt, that's what comes out when you get squeezed because we all get squeezed on the golf course. We all get squeezed in life, right? But the great players, they put in joy and compassion and peace of mind and confidence. And so when they get squeezed, because we all get squeezed, that juice allows them to raise their game. And so tonight, it's my goal to help you to put in the right mental juice so that you can raise your game under pressure, so that you can play your best under pressure. Because that's what it's all about, right? Playing your best under pressure. Performing in the storm, is that what I call it? And, and, and that's the secret to great players. They know how to raise their game under pressure. So what I want to do is I want to share with you um, what I've created is the uh, MAP Mental Game System. I always think it's really important to kind of get an overall viewpoint, uh, an overall framework to understand, um, you know, a system, and then you can learn kind of how the pieces fit. And so let me explain. It's really simple. It's called the MAP Mental Game System. M stands for you are your model, right? So what I mean by that is your mental game is not like Tiger Woods. It's not like Phil Mickelson. It's not like Brooke Henderson. It's not like Lexi Thomas. Basically, you are the best model. You have to model yourself. You have to know why you play great, why you're in the zone, and you are unique. Uh, you're different from me. I'm different from you. We're different from Tiger and Phil. And so you got to figure out you and what makes you tick. That is one of the secrets to the mental game. The second one is you got to focus on what you do right, uh, your strengths, and, and, and harness that. You know, it's easy to focus on what we do wrong and negativity. Our mind, it's easy, goes towards negativity. But the irony is that when you focus on the negative, that's what you get, right? If I say, don't think of a pink elephant, you think of a pink elephant. If I say, don't hit in the water, you think of the water. So if, I'm, if you're thinking don't choke or when you're playing bad, you're figuring out what you're doing wrong, well, you're moving in that wrong direction. But when you're playing really well, you got to figure out what you're doing right. That's the secret of the mental game is that figuring out what you do right and move in that direction. And you are your best model. And the third point is create habits so that they come out under pressure. We know in psychology, your habits come out under pressure so that when you get squeezed, the habits that you created are going to come out under pressure. So if you know the right direction, you know why you play well, you know what makes you tick, you can move in the right direction, you can create habits to move in the right direction so that when you get squeezed, you are going to raise your game. That is the MAP mental game system, right? Easy. Uh, and so I want to share with you uh, how it works across uh, five mental keys. Because I think if you focus on these five mental keys, you're going to master the mental game. So you got to know yourself, awareness. You got to basically master confidence, and know confidence is something you can choose to have. You can harness the power of anxiety. You can be in the moment and be in the process, as we say, and you can get inspired to practice and compete. So we're going to look at all five of those main concepts tonight, okay? So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about uh, Brant. So I worked with Brant when he was uh, at Vanderbilt, and um, great guy, great guy. He's just like he is in person, uh, you see on TV. He was like that in college. He hasn't changed. Um, so one thing that um, what I do when I work with players is I said, Brant, when you're playing your best, you, why? You know, what, what were you feeling and thinking? And he's like, you know, I, I'm energized. I'm pumped up. Uh, you, you know, you, you can see that in him, you know? 
And um, we figured out, okay, he's got to get an intensity level like at an 80. So 100 is way amped, zero is flat. If he can get about an 80 when he goes out to compete, he's going to play his best, right? Now, here's the thing about MAP, right? You might need a 30. You might need to be at a 50. You might not need to be at an 80. Like for me, I, I play my best golf when I'm at like a 40, right? I, I don't want to be too amped. But for Brandt, he's his own best model, and 80 is perfect for him. So this is the kind of questions that I ask. Um, and so, you know, we can't really interact tonight, but you could do this at home, and you can think about this for you, right? So think about a time when you were in the zone, right, playing your best, peak performance. Um, what were you thinking? You know, were you confident? Some people are nervous. Were you um, well prepared? Were your friends there? Were they not there? Um, and also, it's also important to figure out when you weren't playing well to kind of get a difference. Um, but mainly, you should focus on when you're playing your best. And almost look at two or three times when you're in the zone and almost get a pattern. But also figure out why. Why were you playing your best? Was it because you were just enjoying it? Uh, you were loving competition, you were prepared. Um, all those things matter. And knowing the why, knowing yourself and knowing the why is a secret to moving in the right direction, right? So the first step in the MAP mental game system is knowing yourself, knowing why you play really well, figuring out patterns. And then once you figure those out, you can move in the right direction. So, you know, things like same, same kind of things like, why do you have peace of mind when you're playing sometimes? You know, what's causing that? Um, what's causing you to be just totally relaxed and, and in the moment and, and totally confident and inspired to practice? All those things are the why. But it's really knowing uh, what makes you tick, right? And, and once you do, you can move in the right direction. And, and that's the secret of the mental game. Uh, knowing what makes you tick allows you to move in the right direction, right? And so that's what we want to talk about tonight as well, is um, how to help you move in the right direction. And over the, these five keys, figuring out why were you at your best at those keys? Uh, why did you focus? You know, why were you inspired? All those whys, you've got to kind of do some soul searching and, and figure out the why. So I want to move on to the second key, which is uh, confidence is a choice. You know, uh, when I work with young golfers, I always tell them um, uh, yeah, that train, uh, that confidence train is going to leave the station <laughs> a lot of times, right? When you're playing bad, but confidence is always your choice. You can always choose to be confident. Uh, it's within your power. It doesn't matter if you've been playing terrible for a week, two weeks, you've been in a slump, you just hit five bad shots. You can still be confident. It's a choice. It's within your power. And, and that's really uh, cool to believe that because it's true. Um, and, and, and so, you know, you, here's Stacey Lewis, right? She had scoliosis growing up and she became one of the greatest women golfers of all time, right? Because she chose to be confident. Confidence is a choice. Um, and, 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 and just believing that empowers you. Now, the thing about confidence, right, is uh, your game goes up and down, right? Um, through, through a season, uh, through a round, uh, your confidence goes up and down. Your performance goes up and down. Um, but here's the secret. When you're on that downward slide, right, that's when you have to choose to be confident. Because what most people do is when they're, they're on that downward slide, and we always get, everybody gets into, a, let's say, a moon slump, uh, they lose confidence. They start doubting themselves. They start overthinking. They start uh, changing everything. And then they get even maybe into a bigger slump. The secret is, is knowing you're going to get into a downward slide, but choosing to be confident. Now, let's look at some factors on how to basically choose to be confident in a pragmatic way, right? And so, the, the, really, there's, there's, there's four of them. What you say, what you think, how you act, and what you do. Now, we're going to talk about all, all four of these, but I want to ask you a quick question. Which one of these four you think is most important to confidence, right? Which one would you say is most important? Just think about it. Which one is most important? I'm gonna give you a great example. 
I can, I'm five foot eight, right? I'm going to tell myself I can dunk a basketball. I'm going to think my, I'm going to visualize myself dunking a basketball. I'm going to be confident. I know I can dunk a basketball. I can't even touch the net. So there's no way I could be confident I can dunk the basketball. So what you do is the most, is it, uh, basically produces the most confidence, right? Now, the other three are really important, but they're kind of like spice. You know, if you can't do it, you can't really fake it. Um, but if you can do it, then the top, those three are really, really important. And, but I want to talk a little bit about number four, because when you're working with kids, one of the greatest things to do is start small, let them build confidence, and that's how you build their game. You know, it's kind of like uh, you wouldn't have a, a, a seven-year-old shoot at a 10-foot hoop because they might never make it, but they can, you know, shoot an eight-foot hoop. And so they build confidence, then you raise it to nine and then 10. Same thing. So, you know, start small, build confidence. I don't want to focus too much on that. I want to focus on, on um, the next three. So what you say. Now, remember we talked about what makes you tick is really important. And you got to know yourself what makes you tick. Well, if you ever listen to Tiger, he always says when he's in a slump, uh, and he's been in a lot of slumps throughout his life, right? Uh, golf career. Um, I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. That just keeps him, his, his confidence going. He, he loves to say that. Um, he always says that throughout his career. Um, and, it, and basically, that allows him to be his own best friend. It, it just basically says, I'm, I'm close. I'm, I, I keep on practicing. I know I'm, I'm going to turn the corner. I'm going to get it. Um, and and he, he's discovered that that works for him. Now, that, that might not work for you, but that works for him. So same kind of thing. I know when I was growing up and I was playing um, tennis, uh, one of the things I always said was, I'm bringing my A game. I'm bringing my A game, which meant I'm going to try my hardest every point. You know, uh, I'm going to practice really hard before the match. Uh, I'm just bringing my A game. I'm not going there as a slouch. I'm going there and I'm going to bring my A game. And that gave me a lot of confidence, right? Now that worked for me. It might not work for you. The secret is you got to figure out what's going to work for you. Now let's, let's go back and, and, and uh, talk about that. So what you really want to do is think about a few times you're in the zone and write it down. Write down like what you were thinking and feeling. And actually, you got to write it down. This is really important. And then you could circle some words that, um, that let's say, uh, have powerful emotions, right? Um, and you might, you might discover that find the fire helps you to, to bring your A game, right? To, uh, to be confident. It, it, these are like what I call buzzwords. Um, uh, or be at peace. You know, maybe when you're playing your best, you felt like, you know, you're at the beach and it was just this beautiful setting. Um, and that's the North Shore of Kauai, if you didn't know. But the idea is that um, you uh, have to figure out what works for you. Not what works for Tiger, not what works for me, but what works for you. And when you figure that out, then you harness that power, right? So, I want to talk a little bit about visualization. And I do this in my class, and this is something you can do at home. This is really cool. Um, you take a little string with a, um, I'm gonna have to make this a little bit smaller, okay. Uh, it's got a paper clip at the bottom. Might not work too much on the, on the webinar tonight, but I just wanna share with you. And I'm just gonna visualize the paper clip moving parallel to my body. and I'm not moving my hand, but you can see the paper clip moving. I'm not moving my hand, actually. Um, it's an amazing phenomenon. You can do it at home, you try it. You know, get a little string paper clip and you'll see it moving. It's, it's crazy. There's this mind-body connection, right? It's very subtle. Um, we're not appreciative of it all the time, but visualization kind of brings it out. When you see the ball with a little draw or a little fade, it promotes greater feel. There's this, there's this connection, um, subtle connection, but a real powerful connection. Jack Nicklaus always said, uh, I never hit a golf shot until I saw it, right? He, he knew there was this mind-body connection. Now, some people, they have trouble visualizing, but let me, let me help you. You know, we talk with our hands. You can see me talk with my hands. We eat with our hands, but also you should visualize with your hands. I'm going to give you a really cool tip. Next time you're on the putting green, 
mark your ball, put the ball in your hand, get right over your mark, and just feel like you're gonna roll the ball. And you'll actually see the arc much greater. When we use our hands, we, can, uh, we actually create a greater visualization. With greater visualization comes, comes greater feel. So, you know, I always tell players, what's the one difference between when you're having a great short game day and when you're having a bad short game day? It's not usually technique, it's feel. So the greater visualization you have, the greater your feel. The more you use your hands, the greater your visualization, the greater your feel. Now, there's just one way to visualize, um, but, but try it. I guarantee you it'll work, but you gotta visualize if, if you wanna have greater feel. Uh, the other thing with what you think is the visualizations I call the golden nugget book. You know, the first thing we talked about is when you're playing in the zone. Well, write down um, maybe a great shot you had or a great round and create that visualization in your mind. And that's what I call a golden nugget book. You write it down and you can look at that every once in a while, put it in your golf bag. And that promotes these great images that you can bring on the golf course that when you're doing a, you know, in a slumping pattern, it can basically allow you to choose to be confident, right? And then also how we act is um, very important. You know, Jordan Spieth, he gets pumped up, but you notice uh, he also kind of sometimes slouches his shoulders. He's kind of, uh, sometimes he doesn't act confident. He acts like he's not confident. I think that's uh, one of his problems of late um, because our emotions are dictated by our actions. When we act confident, we're gonna feel confident. So you really got to strut your stuff no matter what. Um, you know, you watch, you know, perfect example like Tiger Woods. He always struts his stuff. Um, or Phil Mickelson. He struts his stuff. But you know what's also cool about Phil? He's always like smiling. He's always having a good time. You know, I don't care if he's playing bad. He's, he looks like he's having a great time all the time. That is one of his secrets, to playing great golf. Because he's just having a good time and he shows it. His emotions show it. So he feels like he's having a great time. So I just want to stop here just for a minute. And, uh, you know, I told you the uh, seminar webinar is sponsored by the International Golf Psychology Association. Well, they have an online course. Um, if you're taking this webinar, uh, you can get it for half off at $199. You, you uh, basically get a certificate um, sponsored by the International Golf Psychology Association. I hope this works. I'm going to go to the site just real quickly. Um, and I'm hopefully going to come back. And um, I just want to share with you the, um, the site. Uh, you can see, um, we wish the hole looked that big, right? It's um, approved by continuing education by the PGA. It's approved for continuing education by the LPGA. It's endorsed by the United States Golf Teaching Federation. So a lot of people really see the value in this um, course. And basically it has the six sections or the five sections, I'm sorry, the five keys, awareness, confidence, anxiety, concentration, motivation. Um, everyone has um, videos, every section videos, articles, and applied exercises. But what's really cool too is you can see a whole section. So if you go, that was the sample section, sample course, you can, it has a whole section on confidence. I'm just going really quick to the videos. You can see there's like 10 videos on confidence, stuff we just talked about. There's articles, applied exercises. This is just the, um, the uh, confidence sample section, uh, but all the sections are the same, right? And, and so you, uh, when you take the course, it basically helps you to master the mental game. But you, know, you can just go on there and watch the free videos you can get a free mental ebook as well. So again, you know, if you're taking this webinar, um, you can uh, you know, sign up for this, um, this course. So let me get back to Now I didn't do that last time. Let me just see. There we go. Okay, thought I lost it for a minute there. 
So this is live. So a little niche there, but uh, that's cool, right? I wanted to share with you that course because um, it's very valuable. Um, uh, let me just say a couple things also before I move on. Uh, if you're a coach, which a lot of you uh, on this webinar are, we uh, also have um, coaches allow their, all their uh, players to take it. Um, we also have it in China. There's a China division, a Jap Japanese division, a Thailand division, a Spanish division. Uh, so again, we'll uh, talk, but if you're, uh, I know people from around the world, if you're interested in uh, maybe running division, we can talk about that, um, or you can email me afterwards. But again, um, you know, a lot of great information. And this is just, you know, um, the stuff in the course, but it's only an hour, right? Um, the course goes into immense detail of, uh, of, um, of the mental game. So let, let's move on and talk about um, the power of anxiety, right? A lot of people think anxiety is negative, but it's not. Um, 40,000 years ago, when we were hunters and gatherers, we uh, were afraid of dying, right? Um, and that created all this anxiety. You know, fear is what creates the anxiety. But we're now no longer uh, afraid of dying. We're afraid of looking foolish. We're afraid of making mistakes. We're afraid of letting down our, uh, our parents. Um, and that fear basically um, creates the anxiety, right? But if you go back to... Uh, 40,000 years ago, the way we survived in a hostile wor uh, world is with the fight or flight response, right? We either fought or we ran like heck. And um, so the fear can make us superhuman. So what I wanna really get at is that this fear produces this energy, right? Anxiety is only an energy. And you can harness that energy in the right direction if you label it the right way. You know, you've heard that story about the mother raising the car because um, her child was underneath. Well, that can happen because she can become superhuman because there's these things in us that can make us superhuman. We can um, think better. We can, um, our feel can be enhanced. So anxiety can, can supercharge us. It can, it can actually make us superhuman. It can make you raise your game. Going back to Brad Snedeker, when he used to tell me when he missed the green, he'd love getting up and down, right? He loved it. And so he saw the, um, uh, you know, the challenge of it. You know, he turned pressure into pleasure, right? And because he turned pressure into pleasure, he, he uh, harnessed the power of anxiety uh, and it made him play better. You know, a lot of people, they flip that around. They turn pleasure into pressure. So instead of enjoying the day with their friends, they think, oh, if I miss the screen, I might make a double bogey uh, and they get tightened and all of a sudden, you know, they skull it or whatever and they do make a double bogey. But the secret is you got to turn pressure into pleasure and you have to enjoy the feeling. You have to basically um, enjoy the challenge, love the feeling of pressure. And, and that's how the best players raise the game. That's the juice what I was talking about earlier, which allows them to raise their game. But I also wanna talk a little bit about um, anxiety um, from a different angle, right? So there's really two types of anxiety, okay? There's what we think, right? Which we call cognitive anxiety. And you kinda of have to label that in a certain way, but there's also feeling anxiety, okay? Um, so the butterflies, right, and the muscle tension, and your, you know, your ears get, my ears get all tingly when I get nervous. My sight goes all, you know, flicker flacker. And um, so you, you have to uh, learn to meditate. You know, Tiger Woods, um, I don't know if you know this, but his, his mother taught him to meditate as a young boy. Uh, a lot of players have learned to meditate. And the reason why meditation is so important is that last statement there is that the relaxation response is really meditation is stronger than the anxiety response. So once you learn to meditate and relax, you can overcome your anxiety. Maybe not get rid of it, but overcome it um, to, a, to, to a majority uh, point. Um, but if you don't, if you say just relax, it won't work because anxiety is very powerful. So that's why you got to learn to meditate. And it's really easy. You just close your eyes. You take some deep breaths. 
right? You relax your toes, relax your calves, you relax your abdominals, your chest, your shoulders, your eyebrows, your top of your head, whatever it is. And over time, you know, three, four weeks, you start getting relaxed. Um, the other thing I would say is when you're in the relaxed state, um, think about a word in your mind like cool or smooth. And so you bring that, which we're going to talk about in a minute, to your pre-shell routine. You know, at the start of your routine, you breathe out, you say your word cool, and you get way more relaxed. Because, again, it's those positive, effective habits that you're working on. And that's one of the reasons why Tiger Woods plays so well. He performs in the storm because he's learned to meditate for years and years and years. So let's talk about um, key number four, focus, being in the moment, being in process. And what I really want to do is I want to talk about um, the three R's, okay? Relax, react, rhythm. Those are the three R's. But let me first talk about um, pre, the pre-shower routine. You know, everybody has heard about the pre-shower routine. You know, I waggle three times, whatever it is. That's not the pre-shower routine. You got to think the pre-shower routine is like this bubble that you've placed around you. And all the pressure just bounces off. So it's not just behaviors that you do. It's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors which place you in this emotionally charged bubble so that you can play your best under pressure. And I think that if you have these three keys, relax, react, rhythm, you will play your best if you have this as your routine. So it's setting you up for greatness. The right routine sets you up for greatness. So let me talk a little bit about relax. You know, if you ever watch Freddie, uh, along, he used to take his club, but really, if you shrug your shoulders, it's a really good thing because a lot of times, you know, we carry our bags or you push your bag, you know, or you're getting out of the um, cart. Well, shrug your shoulders, you know, kind of get you relaxed, you know, because a lot of times there's a lot of tension in your shoulders. Um, you know, you watch, you know, Brant, he, he wiggles his hips. A lot of these guys wiggle their hips in their routine to get the tension out of their hips. But the start of your routine, you got to get relaxed. And we talked about breathing out saying your word, that's a great way to start your routine as well. You could shrug your shoulders, breathe out, say your word, and now you're relaxed. So let's talk about the second one, react. Now that's Matt Wolf. If you've watched him of late, you know, he goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, but the thing is, is it's so effective. It, it's really um, amazing. You know, uh, Sam Snead used to do that too. Not as much, but he did, you know, push forward. The idea is that um, it gets you uh, in motion. You know, you have to stay in motion. You have to be reactive. So let me give you a really good example. You're on the free throw line in basketball. Would you really do this? One, two, three, and then shoot? No, you'd have so much tension. You go one, two, three, shoot, right? You got to get reactive. You got to stay in motion, right? And if you stay in motion, you're loose. And that's why you have to have a trigger. So I could say, you know, I bet everybody on this webinar, let me ask you, what is your trigger to take the putter back when you're putting? Do you have a trigger? Most people don't have a trigger. I just take it back when I feel right. No, 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 no. Under pressure, that's going to really get you. Get a trigger. You know, like for me, uh, I got this from Davis Love III. When his eyes track back to the ball, he takes it back. So the idea, you got to have a trigger to stay in motion. What's your trigger for your full swing, right? You got to have a trigger, right? You have a trigger, allows you to stay in motion, allows you to stay reactive. You know, we all talk about, uh, overthinking. That's because you don't, um, you don't have a trigger. The best players kind of shut off the analytical mind to a majority degree uh, because they have a trigger. They just let it go and they react. Um, and Matt Wolf, you know, is kind of an exaggeration of that, but it's really effective. Um, and so I know at first people laughed at him, but now he's, you know, PGA Tour winner. But the idea is that um, that really helps him and, and that can help you by having a trigger, staying in motion. And the third one is um, have rhythm. Now, that's my buddy, Sir Nick Faldo. Um, background story, uh, I got this call, I guess, seven, eight years ago. You want to do a, a commercial for the Golf Channel? I said, uh, yeah, sure. Do you want to do it with Nick Faldo? Ah, uh, yes. I did a commercial with Nick Faldo. I spent the whole day with him. And I, you know, of course I asked him a bunch of questions. He would, he told me, you know, he counts part of his rhythm, one and two and three and go. But the idea is 
again, you are your best model. You got to figure out what rhythm works for you. But when you're over the ball, I always do this. I count one and two and three and go for me or the players I work with. Because what happens is you see players go one and two and two and two, or they go one and two, three, you know, the idea is if your rhythm is fast in your routine, your swing is fast. If your rhythm is rhythmical, well, if you're rhythmical in your routine, your swing's going to be rhythmical. So your routine sets up your rhythm. So it's really good just to count um, one and go, one and two and go. Whatever works for you. Remember, you are your best model. Um, figure out what works for you, but you got to get into a rhythm, and, and that really helps your swing rhythm. So I want to talk a little bit about the post shot routine. And I, I just as an example here, I got this eight, uh, paper airplane. So if I flew this, which I'm going to fly right now, it went across the room, right? What if I put a bunch of pennies on it? What would it do? It would sink, right? Same thing with you. When you have negative thoughts that you bring to the next shot, you sink. You can't fly. You're, you're grounded, right? You got to learn to let go of those negative thoughts. And that's what a post-shot routine does. But let me tell you what I think is a real effective post-shot routine. You just hit a bad shot. You got three seconds to figure out what you did wrong. I think it's important to figure out what you did wrong because it allows you to kind of let it go. If you don't figure out what you did wrong, and it doesn't really matter if you're right, just figure out what you did wrong. Maybe you got quick at the top, whatever it is. And then you take a practice swing with the correction, right? And then you say next shot. That's like a mental mechanism to let it go. Now again, Figure out what works for you, right? This might be too involved, but figure out what works for you and use it. But you need a post shower routine to let go of that negative stuff. Otherwise, you're like this guy, you know? It's just like weighs you down to the next shot and you, you, you'll be grounded. The other thing I wanted to say is, um, so a lot of us practice bad habits with focus. We're multitaskers. We do five things at once, right? Um, and so what happens when you, when you practice being distracted, you become distracted, right? When you practice being in the moment, you can focus more in the moment. So what I want to say is when you find your mind wandering at work or at home, um, when your son's talking to you about something, his homework, or you're at work and your, your colleague is talking to you about whatever and your mind's wandering, well, guess what? When you go to the golf course, your mind's going to wander because that's what you're practicing. But if you're in that moment totally engaged, then you'll, you do it off the golf course. Then when you come to the golf course, you'll be fully engaged. You'll be in the moment. And a great way to say this, when you find your mind wandering, say, be here now. Pull all your energy back to that moment. And so that when you find yourself on the golf course, you can just say, be here now at the start of your routine or whenever you need to, and you'll find yourself being back in that moment. So you gotta practice the right habits. Remember we talked about the MAP mental game system? Practice the right habits and you become those habits. So key number five, it's hard to be inspired to practice and compete, but really to practice a lot, right? My favorite example, 1997 Tiger wins the Masters by 12 strokes, he goes to uh, Butch Harmon, I got to fix my swing. You know, his swing it was a little bit um, shut at the top and he wanted to hit more high floaters because he knew he, he could win more majors if he could have hit a high floating shot. He's always about the growth mindset. He's, you know, that's why, you know, you watch Tiger and he's always fiddling with his swing. You're like, why is he fiddling with his swing all the time? Because that's kind of what turns him on. He's always kind of trying to evolve. You know, he's trying to have a growth mindset, but it's a balance, right? Um, he also wants to be uh, a champion in terms of majors. So he has a champion mindset and he has a growth mindset. And that allows him to stay inspired to practice and compete. Um, you know, the great players are like that. They're always working on something, but they also want to be the best. It's, it's, a, it's a balancing. So the secret for you is, you know, developing a growth mindset. Every time you practice, go there with a purpose. You know, what, do you, what are you working on? Um, the idea is, uh, you know, you're working on to be a better putter. Um, you know, you got to go there with a couple goals to the, the practice range to figure out what you're working on. And that creates a growth mindset. But also, it's good to compete. 
because when you compete, you kind of see where your flaws, uh, flaws are. Um, and so that's why there's the balance. If you never compete, you really don't know what your flaws are under pressure. So that's why it's real important. And that's what I mean by champion mindset. Just go out there and compete. Um, you don't necessarily think you have to win the tournament, but you got to kind of get into this competitive mindset so that you can kind of see what you need to work on, right? Uh, here's an interesting question for you. Um, Golf Digest did a survey and they asked, what is the number one gripe of golfers, right? The number one gripe, complaint, right? What do you think it is? What do you think is the number one gripe of golfers, right? And it's obvious once you know the answer, right? It's that they can't take their best game or swings from the range to the practice. I'm sorry, to, to the golf course. They can't take their best swings from the range to the golf course, right? So let me explain it this way. Practice is one animal. The golf course or competition is another animal. And when those animals are really separated, your game will transfer. Your game won't, you won't allow your game to transfer. That's what we're talking about here to competition or the golf course, right? When you get those animals closer and closer and closer, they're never going to be the same. But when you get them closer and closer and closer, right, then your game transfers. So perfect example is next time you're hitting a driver, right, just don't hit 20 drivers on the range. The range is huge. It's like this ocean, right? Pick a fairway that's really tight and see if you can hit, you know, how many you can hit at in, those, in those 10 uh, fairways. Make it really tight, you know, a lot tighter than your normal fairway. And you'll see, you'll start feeling pressure or you play with a friend. You know, how many, who, who can get the most fair, you know, hit fairways in, in this tight fairway? You'll see that's like one of the greatest things you can do. Now you're, tra you're creating, uh, putting um, pressure in your practice and you're making that animal getting closer and closer. And when you have a, a great pre-shot routine and you're relaxed and you harness the power of anxiety and you build confidence, you know who you are, you're taking this other animal and you're getting closer. And so you're getting them closer so that your game will transfer, so that under pressure, your game rises to the occasion. You can perform in the storm. That's what we all want to do, right? We want to perform in the storm. We want to play our best under pressure when the, uh, it's cool playing, you know, by ourselves and we're playing great but it's so much better when you're playing great in a tournament or where you're, you're competing with your buddies um, and you're taking their money and you're just playing great. That's what, you know, we thrive on, right? Well, performing the storm is what we're talking about tonight. It's mastering those five keys. It's, 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 it's using the map mental game system, knowing what makes you tick, knowing who you are, knowing, um, why you play your best, and then creating habits to move in the right direction. That's all it is. So that when you get squeezed, the right juice comes out and you raise your game. I, it, it's not simple. Golf's not simple. But the system's simple enough for you to, to, to work on stuff, right? And that's what the goal of the webinar was tonight, to create it so it's simple enough for you to, to work on a lot of this, this really – uh, important stuff because golf is 100% mental, 100% physical. Uh, you know, if you don't work on the mental, it's like playing with only one hand on the club, right? It's not going to work. You got to work on both. But also, it was my goal tonight to kind of share with you and show you what stuff to work on, right? But again, it's it's just you know, we only had this 45 minutes together. And uh, it was hard to take a lot of questions. And I'm going to say, um, if you have any questions, um, email them to mentalrules24 at msn.com. We'll send out an email so you can email me if you have any specific questions. It was, there was too many people uh, on the webinar tonight to take that many questions. But I also want to share with you again, if you want to go into detail, and all this stuff, and really master the mental game, uh, and be an expert, and work on it, you know, um, go to masteringgolfpsychology.com, that's the online golf psychology course by the IGPA, um, and you can get it for half off if you use that promo code, um, 
and there's a lot of free videos you know there's a free ebook but the idea is that um you know every section the five sections have videos articles and applied exercises basically the stuff we've talked about tonight but in just so much more detail right i created the course with um a, a few others but basically it was my 30 years of experience in this field to help you master uh this area of the mental game because uh once you master the mental game, you're gonna play your best under pressure. And, and, that, and that's really what uh, we all wanna do. You know, we wanna play up to our potential in golf. I mean, golf's a great game. We all love golf, uh, but it's so frustrating, right? When we don't play uh, at our potential, especially in front of our friends, oh, that, that's, oh, that's painful, right? So mastering the mental game is key. Um, and let me just say, Hey, we went over a lot of stuff tonight, even tonight, just a little bit from that course, just a little bit. We, it's a lot, right? Uh, so you're going to get a recording tomorrow. Um, and uh, so you can, you know, watch it and uh, go over some stuff. Um, and, you know, again, email me any questions you want. Uh, and, you know, I'm here to help. So uh, I'm Dr. Greg Steinberg. And it's definitely a pleasure and an honor for you to uh, share your evening with me tonight.